Hi all, let's look at Gary Kasparov in round three of the St. Louis Rapid event. So his opponent, Domingue Perez, very, very strong. C4 for Kasparov. We have E6, and this transposes into a Queen's Gambit decline position. Pretty standard stuff. Queen C2 is played here. Quite popular is also Knight F3, the most popular, for example. Uh, on knight f3 b6 we have pretty standard moves here which I thought to be okay for black so anyway queen c2 c5 black takes the risk with potentially having a nice hated queen's pawn here c takes d5 knight takes bishop takes queen takes knight takes so that isolated queen's pawn could be a long-term positional edge for white Knight takes c5. Uh, you know, it's a nice blockade square on d4, and later perhaps white can double rooks. Any ideal world against them. On the plus side for black, it does provide hooks on key squares, and black's got active pieces. Bishop e2, bishop g4. We have now rook a c8. The queen doesn't mind this stair from the rook, it will move when the knight moves. For the moment h3 knight e6 now hitting the queen queen a4 which looks at a7 as well as uh, the fret on g4 bishop h5 and you might think here uh, hold on isn't a7 on here why hasn't that been parried let's have a look at this position here rook c2 is okay for black it's a double attack anyway so the cautious rook d2, but still now rook queen takes a7 does seem to be a concern. Black played very, very energetically and timely here in a timely manner for this energy. Instead of just moving the a6 pawn where white would have a very comfortable position, as I mentioned before, this isolated queen's pawn is a potential plus for white. But black refused that position by playing the move d4, rebellious. White takes on a7, and from there he's actually protecting against d takes e3. Uh, so bishop takes f3 was played. If d3, this is also okay for white. White can take on d3, and weather the storm here, it seems, after queen a4. If a pawn is given back, white's king is not completely... Uh, decimated in fact white stands quite well there so uh, yeah black's choices here after queen takes a7 are pretty limited uh, black plays one of the best ideas available yeah d takes e3 white just takes with the queen and is fine uh, so yeah black actually played bishop takes with a very interesting idea now queen b4 and kasparov was looking around the board here you know wondering what he'd missed in this position why rook ad1 isn't a good move he was wondering what he missed uh let's see i mean it's it's a tricky position if uh if black plays an ordinary move i mean say say d takes White can either take on d8 or or take on e3 with a very comfortable position. A pawn up. Yeah, it would just be a pawn up, very comfortable position with a nice bishop across the diagonal. It's just much better. Okay, for white. But black has a resource that he's been counting on here, tactical resource. Can you spot it in this position? Black to play, if I give you five seconds. Okay. Rook c1, yeah. Putting this rook for then queen takes d2. White has now very limited choices. Uh, he has to be very careful. He takes on c1. Yeah, he doesn't want a disaster like queen takes d2 here. Ouch. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, after rook c1 takes that off, queen takes d2, the black queen is a nuisance here. So even though white's winning b7, the black queen is taken now on a2, and it fizzles now into a simplifying position where not much is going on. In fact, a draw was agreed here. Uh, Kasparov described black's play as kind of in innovative, actually, uh, as though it was from computer-generated preparation. It's probably right. Yeah, it seems a very, very accurately played game from black throughout here. So very energetic, uh, accepting that accepting that risk of the isolated queen's pawn, but having just enough tactical counterplay to stay in the game. Okay, hope you got something from that. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.